Nigerians enthused rush to benefit from free train ride and 50% discount transport costs as more elderly people receive support from Renewed Hope Initiative. President Tilubu commends peaceful propagation of faith, service to humanity as Ansaridin society celebrates centenary anniversary. Desist from disrupting circulation of cash or face sanctions, CBN warns banks, POS operators. Good evening and welcome to the Network News on NTA. I'm Naja Atutajani. Michael Olaleye joins us from the Center of Excellence, Lagos. NTA News is always live on our website, nta.ng slash live. Also follow us across all social media platforms for the latest, most accurate news. Let's begin with spiritual affairs. President Bola Tinubu was among the congregation at the Ansaridin Central Mosque, Suriliri, Lagos, for the Jumat Congregational Prayer this Friday. The president was at the mosque to rejoice with the Ansaridin Society of Nigeria on its 100th year anniversary commending the society for its peaceful propagation of the faith and services to humanity through the years. State House correspondent Musbaud Wahab has more. The number one citizen was a special guest as the society commemorated its centenary with a special Juma prayer. The journey for moral and social development of Muslims under the umbrella as narrated by the National Mission of the Society has been eventful and full of sacrifices to spread the beauty of Islam across Nigeria. The Imam, however, admonished leaders across levels to be fair and just in their respective administration and governance. Nurging President Sinubu to justify the trust and support he got from Nigerians, Sheikh Hamad called the attention of a president to the economic pressure on Nigerians, which he said requires timely attention. May God continue to protect and guide you, and may he grant you the wisdom to uplift Nigerians. After the Juma prayer, President Tinubu had the floor to appreciate the society's contributory support, which culminated in his emergence as a Nigerian leader. Again, he acknowledged the social and economic realities in the country, but added he has only taken the bold decisions for a better Nigeria. I understand things are a bit tough right now, but these steps are necessary for a better future of a country. Ansaruddin Society of Nigeria marked its 100 years of existence on the 21st of December 2023. In Lagos, Muspal, Dan Wahab, NC News. And on the economic front, Vice President Kashim Shatima has charged members of the National Economic Council to shelve the idea the idea rather of vacation in the Yuletide and carry on with issues of governance to ease the burden of Nigerians hanging on their shoulders. At the 138th meeting held virtually, the Vice President said President Bola Tinubu has shown that the challenges inherited by the administration are surmountable and has offered visionary leadership presenting a coherent development plan to assist in the country's pursuit of order abundance and stability. The Vice President stressed the need for citizens to feel the positive impact of fuel subsidy removal and forex unification, noting that high inflation and cost of living are global challenges which have affected the economies of all countries. The NEC also set up the Committees on Economic Affairs as well as the Committee on Crude Oil Theft and Management to be headed by Kwara State Governor Abdurrahman Abdurazak and his Imo State counterpart, Senator Hope Uzodimma 
respectively. The Economic Matters Committee is to prepare a clear roadmap for dealing with petroleum subsidy, including a framework for defending wage negotiations, among others, while the Committee on Crude Oil Theft and Management, an existing NEC committee, has been reconstituted with the Secretariat to be domiciled at the Ministry of Budget and Economic Planning. Meanwhile, the petroleum downstream sector in Nigeria is set to experience a boom with the mechanical completion and flare startup of the old Port Harcourt refinery heralding the commencement of oil production. The Minister of State Petroleum Heineken Lupubiri and the Minister of State Petroleum Resources Gas Ikpirikbe Epo alongside other stakeholders witnessed the unveiling of the rehabilitated refinery and its chairs from Nigerians. Lydia Sampson reports. It was a steering committee meeting with a difference as the 15th steering committee meeting coincides with the mechanical completion and flare startup. The minister's board members and management of NMPC Limited took journalists on a tour of the Patakot refinery. The managing director of Patakot refinery and the contracting firm explicitly used the platform to update the visitors on the ongoing work. Armed with the first-hand information on the landmark renewed hope achievement, they agreed it is the fulfillment of a promise made to Nigerians. The mechanical part is completed and this is the beginning of you know the completion of not just this particular refinery, you know phase one and two, but the one for Wari and then the one in Kaduna. It is a good news equally to LPG users that as the refinery commence after Christmas, we will have a sufficient supply of LPG, which will automatically reduce the import at that level. So it is something to celebrate. The board and management of NMPC Limited also reeled out their progress and reiterate commitment to the timely completion of the Potakot refinery. We are looking forward to that day when this location, this refinery, will be producing at a level that will consume locally and that will be essential for uh, in, I mean, export. We have a competent contractor and subcontractors. Our staff are extremely determined to deliver on this project. It's a matter of emotion for very many of our staff in this company, and that today it is promise fulfilled. We are done with the first one. We will complete the first two as we promised within 2024, maximum the last quarter of 2024. Mechanical completion and flare startup is expected to bring on stream phases that will herald the commencement of petroleum products. They noted that the ripple effects on the community and the country at large will spark economic development across the value chain. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Smooth flow of the Naira is next and the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has warned banks and point of sales operators, POS, to desist from disrupting circulation of the Naira or face sanctions. In a statement by the acting director, corporate communication of the bank, the attention of the Central Bank of Nigeria has been drawn to alleged cases of collusion between some deposit money banks and POS operators, which is affecting the availability of cash. The CBN says it frowns at such inappropriate actions by certain individuals and is investigating the reported cases of capable, rather, of undermining the smooth running of the economy. Meanwhile, members of the public are encouraged to use alternative payment channels as well as report any case of unauthorized activities such as capping and hoarding by banks or POS agents to the CBN branch in their locations. Now we're talking the Christmas or Yuletide travel. The Federal Government Transport Fare Discount Program is yet to pick up in Borno State. NTA News investigations show that the delay may not be unconnected to non-operation of all transport companies involved in the scheme in Borno State. In the meantime, Governor Babagana Umar Zulum has rolled out a similar arrangement which offers free ride to non-indigents travelling out for Christmas. Zainab Adam tells us more. The season of Christmas is one season of love, care, and merriment. Christians look on to, most often characterized by lots of travels as people go to their country homes for celebration. In Barno State, 
train services are not available. Likewise, operations of road transport companies engaged by the federal government to offer 50% discount of transport fees to travelers. What obtains therefore is a scheme of the Borneo state government that offers 100% free ride to such travelers. In addition, each traveler is given 20,000 Naira cash assistance. Due to insurgency-induced challenges, operations of long-distance luxury buses that normally convey the passengers, especially those going to the southern part of the country, are not available. But no express buses are therefore used to convey them to just the Plateau State Capital from where they are boarded into buses to their final destinations. You discover that some family, they never travel for like more than five, three years. Honestly, I'm so much happy because they are also happy to, you know, to benefit from this uh, congestion that our Hebrew governor have uh, released for us. We give opportunity to those who ordinarily cannot afford. We, we have this list. Uh, we call the vulnerable list. We appreciate this uh, assistance today, giving us an opportunity to be on the, from uh, Maduguri to Lagos. These annual free Christmas trips that started in 2020 has over the years strengthened sense of belonging among non-indigents, especially Christians in Borno State. In Maiduguri, Zainab Adam, NTA News. And still on interventions in Borno State, Governor Babagana Umarazulum has personally coordinated disbursement of 100 million naira to more than 10,000 families in Ran, headquarters of Kalabalge local government area. The governor travelled from Meiduguri on board a helicopter to supervise the disbursement of cash to residents, many of whom have lost their means of livelihood. Mohamed Goni completes the report. The beneficiaries that include male heads of households, vulnerable women and housewives, each receive 10,000 Naira cash. They express gratitude to the state governor for the continued support to them at the trying moment. The governor explained that the cash disbursement was to support residents in Ron, a community cut up from other parts of the country by perennial flooding for about six months. Their farmlands were completely destroyed by elephants. That has necessitated the government of Borno State to come and support them with cash. Because they cannot survive without cash. We cannot bring food items to them. We cannot bring food and non-food items to this town because of lack of access. While in run, Governor Zilm addressed troops of the three battalion, expressing gratitude to the Nigerian military for their sacrifices and resilience in maintaining peace and protecting the people of Borno State. The governor directed that all soldiers at the battalion be given 50,000 naira each as Christmas and end of the year gifts. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTN News. Still speaking of Christmas, the busiest time to travel around the world is during the Yuletide as people look forward to spending time and exchanging gifts with loved ones. Now the 50% discount on transportation fare announced by the federal government is what Nigerians are calling the best gift of the season. Zenrit Digmun has excerpts from our nationwide bulletin and also a compilation of reactions from Nigerians and other reports from across the nation. Capital City, Abuja. Abdullahi Ajia reports on residents' experiences. It's not cut down price at all. Okay, so mm, it's not, it's not what fair. are you expecting? Probably. I thought they were going to slash it in half now, but they did not. The government decision to make trans uh, journeys free during this Yuletide season is working well. Two trips from Abuja and two trips from Kaduna. Those 600 to 700 passengers have been moved at the same time on a trip. Because of the capacity of what we are moving, whoever that tries it today and couldn't get it should please try another day. Commuters traveling to Abuja from Kaduna by train acknowledge the federal government's initiative for the free train service during the Yuletide as monitored by Haruna Mohammed at the Rigasa train station. But they have made it very easy for us, so thank you very much. We wish they can keep doing something like this for us in future. People like me are many, so I said thank you very much for the, the, the gesture. From Enugu and Port Harcourt, 
James Okwarai Kocha and Robinson Deratede tell us that the residents are jubilating. When it is January, when they are about to go back, as it's taking place in different parts of Nigeria now, like Lagos, Abuja, Kanu, everybody is coming home. That is how it will be in the reverse. Travelers that are going out of the state and they really want to benefit from the policy. So they are also um, perhaps appealing to the federal government to impress it on the companies to really respect the, uh, the policy. And the joy is endless in Benin as Ifoma Okafo reports. This park is seem to be devoid of activities because... The, the, tra the transports that are going very far this morning, they've already left. And the, the, the management has already given us information that they've already started uh, collecting the 50% uh, palliative from the president. Larry Belayi in Lagos says there is an upsurge of people, especially at the train station. And Grace Ayonleke also reports of a similar situation in Ibadan. This year, with the government's directive, that it's going to be free. Imagine the upsurge of people coming in to apply online. Those that are riding for the first time, they really lord the government for this. And they are saying that uh, with the, the economic situation in town, they are so happy that they can travel to enjoy the youth tide with their loved ones. Now, the effect of this initiative is more evident in Lokoja, as Jonathan Omajali tells us of the heavy gridlock experienced on the road while Susan Esu in Asaba reports on the free access for travelers plying the first and second Niger Bridge. And this is a major route for them to ply. So um, it's, it's nothing unusual. Uh, we, we can only hope that those that are in charge of managing the traffic, like I say, will be on, the, on, on top of their games. Before this time, people would spend two, three days on the first Niger Bridge to cross to the east. But the situation, like I said, is quite different and the people are very, very excited. In Abuja, Zen Redding Moon, NT News. Excitement is indeed in the air. It's time for some message. Without the support and patronage of the three arms of government. Ministries, departments, agencies, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, and of course, you, our esteemed viewers. Let's get set to make 2024 even greater. Together, Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Thanks for staying tuned to the NTA. The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, received the Chief of Defence Staff, General Christopher Musa, whose visit to the Minister was to acknowledge the critical role of information management in the fight against insecurity, as well as discuss the adoption of non-kinetic approach to addressing the multifaceted nature of insecurity in Nigeria. Salihu Gwanara reports. Evolving challenges of insecurity, particularly the menace of banditry, kidnapping and insurgency, made improving security a priority of the renewed hope eight-point agenda. The engagement with the minister and heads of agencies under the Ministry of Information and National Orientation is a practical demonstration of the Nigerian Armed Forces' desire of adopting the soft power model as a strategy to address the root causes of insecurity. Uh, what we are facing, the challenges of asymmetric warfare, is people-centric. Both us and the terrorists or criminals are looking for the hearts and minds of the public. So whoever wins, wins the war. And so we don't want them to have that feel. And that's why we feel it is very, very important that we come. Because for us in our operation, this is a missing link. In our lines of operation, information is one critical aspect, especially strategic information. So every Nigerian should understand that we have something at stake. Mohammed Idris says the ministry he supervises is a one-stop shop for critical partnership in the interest of the nation. The collaboration that you require for all of us to come so that we fight insurgency and, uh, and forge unity, forge development, forge peace in this country, this is the right place to come. The concept of nationalism, nationhood, you know, patriotism, 
must return for, for us to have the desired unity. Collaboration between the citizens and intelligent agencies is of essence to secure the country. In Abuja, Saliu Guanara, NTA News. I just had to quickly wear my emblem after that report of the CDS visit to the Minister of Information. It's a season of giving and the train of the Renewed Hope Initiative Elderly Support Scheme has reached some states. Selwa Khalil Ibrahim compiled a story of the 100,000 Naira gift to the elderly of the first courtesy rather of the first lady, Senator Uluremi Tinubu, as reported from correspondents across Nigeria. From Katsina, Awan Haliru report that Nigeria First Lady Senator Oluremi Tinubu has distributed 100,000 naira each to 250 elderly citizens in Katsina State under the Renewed Hope Initiative Elderly Support Scheme in a message delivered by the wife of Katsina State Governor Zuleha Dukorada. The First Lady urged beneficiaries to make judicious use of the funds. It becomes very important to emphasize the significant and patriotizing our elderly citizens in our initiative. While in Abakaleke, 250 vulnerable elderly citizens have received 100,000 Naira each at the maiden edition of the Renewed Hope Initiative Elderly Support Scheme of the wife of the President, Senator Olurami Tinubu, as Governor Francis Nwifuru complimented the First Lady's gesture by announcing 100,000 Naira Yuletide gift to civil servants in the state as reported by Caleb Obona. I'm overjoyed. I'm so, so happy. I don't know how to express my feelings because this is the first of its kind in the I think I can go to market now and pick some things. The deed will remain indelible in my heart. Similarly, from Ilori in Kwara State, Aisha Abubakar Yahya report that 250 elderly persons in Kwara also had a taste of the pudding from the Renewed Hope Initiative. Wife of Kwara State Governor Olu Folake Abdurazak flagged off the distribution of 100,000 naira to each of the beneficiaries. By reaching out to the elderly in this festive period, we not only honor their contribution, but also acknowledge the unique encounters they face. And from Lafia, Abigail Bashi report that 250 elderly people in Nasrallah State have benefited from the Nigeria First Lady's Renewed Hope Initiative Elderly Support Scheme as a means to improve their well-being. Wife of Nasrallah State Governor Silifat Abdullah Hisuli, while presenting 100,000 naira to the beneficiaries on behalf of the First Lady, Senator Olurami Tinubu, urged them to put the funds to good use. And 250 elderly persons selected across the 33 local government area of Oyo State have benefited from the renewed hope initiative of Nigeria First Lady, Senator Oluremi Tinubu, who was represented by wife of Oyo State Governor, as reported by Adebola Agbaje. This story is no different in Yola. As Usman Mukhtar report that the First Lady, Senator Olurami Tinubu, has supported 250 elderly persons with 100,000 naira each in Admiral State to ensure that they spend the festive period in a happy mood. Agbaje, the train was also in Bauchi State, where Awal Abdullahi report that 250 elderly persons benefited from a free medical care and cash gift of 100,000 naira each on the, the Renewed Hope Initiative for Elderly Persons by Nigeria's First Lady, Senator Oluremi Tinubu. The initiative is to cushion the hardship faced by the elderly. These economic empowerment programs is born out of steady past commitment to the well-being of our elderly citizens and it made it mark a significant side in our collective pursuit of a more inclusive and compassionate society. In Abuja, Salwa Khalil, NTA News.
Nigeria's First Lady Oluremi Tinubu has again been commended for promoting the welfare of vulnerable members of the armed forces community through various interventions. The Chief of the Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala, who gave the commendation during a curtsy visit to the office of the First Lady, says her kind disposition to wives and other dependents of officers and men of the armed forces has done a lot to boost their morale. The impact it has made in the armed forces of Nigeria, particularly the Nigerian Navy. Recently, Her Excellency donated 250,000 Naira to widows of our diseased personnel. And the impact of that donation on the morale of our personnel has been very tremendous. So I took it upon myself to come here today to let Her Excellency know that we appreciate while 2023 witnessed a lot of effort by the Nigerian Navy to recapitalize its assets and dominate the maritime domain for economic growth, 2024, the Chief of Naval Staff says, will be devoted to consolidating and supporting the nation's economy. Also enhancing our capacity in terms of uh, surveillance, we are enhancing our capacity to conduct patrols, we are also making our patrols to become more intelligent driven. So I believe that 2024, we are going to turn the tide against the criminals in the maritime sector. Meanwhile, the National Senior Citizen Center has commended the First Lady, Senator Remy Tinubu, for the generous inclusion of senior citizens in her Renewed Hope initiative in the country. In an official statement, NSCC Director General Dr. M. M. Omokaru says the gesture by the First Lady confirms the favorable disposition of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's administration to older persons in Nigeria. Signed by NSCC's Head, Corporate Affairs, Media and Communications, Omini Oden, the statement, the act. The statement says the act by Her Excellency Senator Remy Tinubu has accorded senior citizens a welcome sense of inclusion and addressed their rights to non-discrimination. The NSCC Director General gives assurance that the National Senior Citizen Center will keep creating sector-wide partnerships to mainstream older persons into social investment programs, health and social care, and other laudable initiatives, including the realization of one community, one senior center project. The National Senior Citizen Center will also continue to create awareness of its robust and sustainable older person-centered and community-oriented programs and services towards achieving a dignified, healthy, happy and secure geriatric population, welcoming states, local governments and private sector partnerships to adopt and replicate across the country. The Oyo command of the Nigeria Police Force has dismissed two constables for soliciting bribe from a foreign national. Grace Ayanlike reports that the dismissal comes at a time the force is undergoing reform and working hard to regain the trust of the people. Something now. Give me something. Special constabularies Jimon Lukman and Kazim Fatai caught on camera extorting a Dutch female tourist along the Moniya Isen Road of Oyo State have been dismissed and ceased to render their services to the Nigeria police. The duo were said to defy numerous orders and directives against professional misconduct, extortion, incivility towards members of the public. The dismissal, according to the police, would serve as deterrent to erring officers who put the police in a bad light and help build the confidence of the citizenry that the police is indeed the people's friend. We don't condone extortion. We don't condone corruption. I have reviewed the other room conducted for them an appropriate punishment method out to them. The police used the occasion to reiterate its commitment in ensuring safety of lives and property during the U-Tide. The Special Constabulary is a volunteer force established by law, with duties more limited in scope. Special Constabularies are seized with specific tasks such as crowd control, event security, and traffic control. In Ibado, Grace Anyoliki, NTA News. 
the Supreme Court has affirmed Peter Mba of the People's Democratic Party as the duly elected governor of Enugu State. In a unanimous decision delivered by Justice Garba Mohammed, the five-man panel of justices dismissed the appeal of the Labour Party and its candidate Chijuki Edeoga challenging the outcome of the Enugu state governorship election held in the state on March 18. The Apex Court affirmed that it found no reason to dislodge the concurrent verdicts of the Enugu state governorship election petition tribunal and the Court of Appeal in Lagos, which dismissed all the allegations the appellants raised against the election victory of Governor Mba. The court resolved all the issues which the appellants raised in the appeal against them. After the conduct of the election, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, declared and returned Mba of the P PDP as winner of the election, having polled 160,895 votes. It's time for more news from Lagos with Michael. Hello, Michael. Over to you. Hello, Najatu. Good to see you. After two months of closure, the four ramps on the third Milan Bridge have been reopened, increasing commuters' accessibility options this festive season. Jack Pokwala reports that apart from easy mobility between the island and mainland, motorists are excited about the development. The repair work on the Adekunle section of the third Milan Bridge and the access road linking Yaba was a proactive step to guarantee the integrity of the bridge. In view of the significance of the four ramps to connectivity to the island, all hands were on deck to ensure speedy completion. Now that the bridge has been opened, it's a huge relief for the motoring public as it will eliminate the stress of having to navigate longer routes to Yaba and Oyimbo axis amidst heavy traffic. The bridge which links Oyimbo from Adekunle Session has road markings and other facilities for safe motoring experience. Uh, this is excellent. I'm so happy for this. Maintenance is the key to life. Um, whatever government have done, the taxpayers will be very happy with this. Awesome, awesome. I think the road is very clear. This is the first time I'm passing it after the repairs and I'm impressed. Um, everybody is very happy because it's, not, it's, it's going far. From Bani to enter, we Bani go to and follow in book. And I've come from Burger now. I didn't use almost 25 minutes. This road is good. The Federal Controller of Works in Charge of Lagos had assured members of the public that the closed sessions will be reopened before Christmas celebration. I hope to go to the main deck before Christmas, but we want to hand over this before we now go there. The entire stretch of the Ted Milan Bridge is expected to receive attention early next year. In Lagos, Joel Ukwola, NC News. Former Minister of Agriculture and the President of Africa Development Bank, Dr. Akimumi Adeshino, has been named the winner of this year's Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership Award. Chairman Chief of Obafemi Awolowo Foundation and former Secretary, Gen Secretary of the Commonwealth, Chief Eme Kanyaoku, made the announcement during a press briefing in Lagos. Bolaji Akim completes the story. Press conference. Obafemi Prize for Leadership was initiated by the Obafemi Aulawo Foundation in 1992 as a custodian of Chief Obafemi Aulawo's intellectuals and leadership. Having noticed that leadership qualities are eroding, the award is said to encourage, reward, and celebrate excellence in leadership. Speaking with the press, former Commonwealth Secretary General Chief Eme Yoku revealed that nominees for the award are drawn from within and outside the country. After painstaking sorting and scrutiny, Dr. Akimumi additional emerged the winner of 2023 edition. He has demonstrated core leadership qualities that have been associated with Chief Obafemi Awolowo, and which this prize is meant to encourage and to reward. The screening committee considered some qualities before arriving at their conclusion. Dr. Deshino is a person whose outstanding leadership has occasioned public policies that have positively transformed millions of lives. Dr. Deshino will officially receive the award on the 6th of March 2024, which is also late chief of Bafemi Aulawo's birthday. In Lagos, Bolaji Akim, 
NTA News. Now time to talk business. I'll start by telling you that the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission says it has generated 56 billion naira as internally generated revenue in 2023. The Executive Vice Chairman of FCCPC, Babatunde Irukera, stated this at a media engagement, which was a platform to reflect on the way so far and the way ahead in Abuja. Online Kaojo reports that the FCCP bus also noted that 90% of the internally generated revenue was raised from penalties and that 22.4 billion was remitted to the federal government. It's the real possibility of our country. Our possibilities are absolutely limitless. We believe that the market should be unlocked. We believe businesses should be allowed to operate well we believe they should thrive, but we also believe in consequence. We believe that businesses must be held accountable. If you don't hold people accountable, you cannot promote good behavior. Still talking trade on the continent as Nigeria joins African Continental Free Trade Area's Guided Trade Initiative Phase 2 to enhance trade. Experts are of the view that challenges militating against increased production for exports has to be addressed head-on. You can produce in any part of Africa and sell to Nigeria. There is no more boundary in production and sale. You can produce in Tunisia and sell to Nigeria, no import duty. You can produce in South Africa and sell to Nigeria, no import duty. So the market belongs to the entire Africa. That's what it means. So if your country cannot produce competitively, then you are at a loss. So we just need to be able to make sure that we correct this error. No amount is too much to be able to spend on making sure that our infrastructure is put in the very right proportion to be able to assist trading in Africa. And to look at the market, the Nigerian exchange closes for Christmas in the bearish territory as all share index slides down by 0.36% from yesterday's all-time high of 74,289.02 basis points. At the end of the last weekday of trading, a total of 423.3 million shares in 6,333 deals corresponding to a market value of 16.5 billion were traded. Data shows 44% decline in volume, 27% improvement in turnover, but 21% decline in deals. The current market capitalization is 40.5 trillion naira. Universal Insurance Company recorded the highest volume of 41.9 million traded shares, followed by Transcap Nigeria, 41.9 million, and Mutual Benefits Assurance, 30.2 million. That is Business News. Network News continues with Naja. Thank you, Benny. You're watching NTA News, but NTA is also in the news, hinting it will work towards hosting the media summit of the national broadcasting outfits of countries belonging to the Developing Eight Organizations for Economic Cooperation in 2024. Director General Nigerian Television Authority Salihu Abdulhamid Dembos hinted this during a visit by the organization's Secretary General Isiaka Imam to the NTA headquarters in Abuja. Kunle Adeyayi reports. The Developing Aid Organization for Economic Cooperation has eight member states from the continents of Africa, Europe and Asia. Its major objective is to achieve a target of inter-trade figure of $500 billion economy before 2030. Secretary General Isiaka Imam unequivocally emphasized that Nigeria being an active member will be instrumental to this and craved for NTA's partnership. We established purposely for economic and trade organization and our priority areas include majorly agriculture and food security, you know, uh, trade and industry, SME is very, very paramount to us, Energy is key to us. With NTA's wide reach, the authority has pledged to help the organization broaden its horizon in terms of trade and economic cooperation, energy and tourism. The proposal that you have made uh, has trying to organize uh, a forum for the public media organizations in the eight uh, countries. Um, I would like to assure you that uh, with this proposal, 
we will we'll kick start the process. And uh, we'll be doing that through your office uh, to have contact with the other uh, member countries with a view to having a summit. Hopefully, uh, we, by next uh, 2024, okay. we should be able to hold one. Uh, the, that is the inaugural one in, in Nigeria. Excellent. Yes. Other members of the Developing Aids Organization for Economic Cooperation include Bangladesh, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Malaysia, Pakistan, and Turkey. Kunle Adeyei, NTA News. Let's update. Legendary African football giant Al Ali of Egypt defeated Japan's Urawa 4 2 Friday evening to claim her fourth historic bronze medal in the FIFA Club World Cup with a remarkable record of 25 matches played in nine appearances at the FIFA Club World Cup. The African and Egyptian champions maintained their supremacy over Asia size to get on the podium. Still talking football matters, uncertainty surrounds the kickoff of the European Super League despite favorable court sentence that fronted FIFA and UEFA disposition to the league as this is contrary to European laws. Manchester United, Manchester City, Chelsea among others have pledged their commitment to existing competitions they play in while the Premier League has rejected the European League concept. Many clubs that are in debt, like um, Barcelona, Napoli, and um, uh, some French team as well. So this would be a welcome development for them. But uh, generally, I still don't know how this is going to work. In goal, Benga Yodele is the winner of season four for the Love of Golf charity competition in Lagos with 37 points on counterpart to push Ejiro Gomigo to the second position. Abiola Dewusi won the female category with 39 points. The initiator of the competition, Dr. Adeshola Falai, is using the tournament to provide support for children cancer patients. For this year, our focus is University College Hospital, UCH Ibadan. We are going to be donating the proceeds of this donation to the pediatric cancer ward of UCH. And on a sad note, Nigeria football fraternity is still mourning the death of a football legend, Nigerian ex-international Philip Buama, who died Thursday. The late Ghanaian-born player and coach was part of the victorious IICC team of 1976 that won the first ever continental title for Nigeria. He was also a member of the Green Eagles in 1970. With Sports Update, Ulum De Guntola, NT News. Vice President Kashim Shetima has commiserated with the family of the late Waziri of Borno, Yerima Mustafa Mukhtar in Meiduguri. The Vice President, who was away when the Waziri in Borno passed on, prayed Allah to grant the deceased eternal rest and the family the fortitude to bear the loss. The Waziri in Borno died last Saturday following a protracted illness. The death has also occurred of Mama Saratu Yakubu Tukur, mother of former Speaker, House of Representatives Yakubu Dogara. Mama Saratu Yakubu Tukur died this Friday, December 22nd, 2023, aged 103, with former Speaker Dogara saying his mother lived a life of total commitment, dedication, and service to God and humanity. Mama is survived by five children, many grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Funeral arrangements will be announced in due course. And next is the weather forecast. Glad you could join us. Moderate dust haze with horizontal visibility range of 2,000 to 5,000 meters is expected across the northern region throughout the forecast period. The central cities and the inland areas of the south will be predominantly sunny in hazy atmosphere, while the coastal belts of the country are expected to see some few clouds. Later in the day, isolated cases of thunderstorms are expected over parts of rivers, Aquaibom and Bayelsa states. We expect very unhealthy air quality over parts of Gombe and Gusau, so we advise the general public to stay indoors as much as possible. Thank you for watching. My name is Joyce Ogunleye. 
The weather forecast concludes the network news on NTA. Thanks for watching. I'm Nadja Atatijani, wishing you a Merry Christmas in advance. of communication is inherently harmless. It becomes harmful and damaging when used without discretion and thoughtfulness. Bad social media users spread rumors and fake news without verification. But good social media users stop, reflect and verify information before sharing it. Be a good social media user. Stop the spread of fake news. Verify the authenticity of your source and use social media responsibly for a better Nigeria. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency. There's nothing better than the roar of your fans. But in Nigeria, there's a roar that will not be heard again. With fewer than 50 lions left in the wild, they could be extinct in the next few years. From loss of habitat and prey, and snares set for illegal bushmeat. Please say no to illegal bushmeat, and let's keep the roar alive for Nigeria. Poaching steals from us all.